Here's your host, Alex Garrett. I was very honored to be able to go inside St. Patrick's Cathedral on St. Patrick's Day. And while I wasn't sure the security measures about seeing the Cardinal uh, post-mass processional today, I was very honored to meet John Dunleavy, who was the former chairman of the St. Patrick's Day Parade of New York City, the largest parade he was a chairman. And in the middle of St. Patrick's Cathedral, he stopped to talk with me for a good eight minutes. You gotta listen to this. We made a lot of changes in the parade on that time. John Dunleavy is his name. I'm with uh, John Dunleavy here on Alex Garrett Podcasting, a chairman of the St. Patrick's Day Parade for 20 years. Years. Uh, First of all, what was that experience like? You just told me a little bit about how you got people into the church and then did the celebration, the parade. That's correct. How did you grow this parade to be what it is today? Well, you invited different people in, in to participate in the parade, and there was a certain element we, we, we uh, individuals had to perform. You couldn't come in and just march up any old way. They had to be dressed properly. They had to march the 69th, the military, all the counties, and, and, and a variety of different things, emerald societies. They all grew with the parade, and they all wanted to be in the parade. That was their dream to organize as an organization and be invited to march on the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And from about 45 minute parade, it ended up with almost four and a half to five hours of a parade going up Fifth and, and it went on TV, so I guess you Until, helped orchestrate that correct. as well. We had four hours of television at that time on Channel 11, and then I went to Channel 4. And Frank Comerford, I think, was a grand marshal at one point, Jim, wasn't he? Uh, Judge James Comerford was the chairman when I, when I started working on the parade. And then Frank Byrne succeeded him, and I succeeded Frank Byrne. Well, right now, we're in the middle of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Obviously, no parade this year. But if yes. you were a chairman in the pandemic, how would you have done a parade? What would you have done if this had been under your watch in the pandemic? Well, I would certainly have had a celebration on, on, in some way, shape, and form. Uh, you can't let things uh, people get, when, th- when people don't have somewhere to go they should have had some indoor celebration I don't get what it was get the, the leaders of the organisation get them together and bring them up to date on what was happening and what we could do and what we could and it's amazing when you throw something out in the, to the people what the response is mm-hmm. and you get a lot of great <laughs> ideas and you now say you're well that a- wouldn't work but with a little uh, a little uh, manoeuvring on it that area could work you're from Ireland right? Where, yes what I part? am yes I was indeed I was born in Ireland in 1938 and I was only here three months and 15 days and I was drafted into the military I spent my two years in the US Army in the Hawaiian Islands wow so my, my cousins here when they said where are you going they said you've got to be kidding us we were born here and dreamed about going to Hawaii you come here and three months later they're shipping you out to the Hawaiian Islands and Did- that's that's where I spent my two years on the Hawaiian Islands. So. Did you ever think you'd be the chairman of the St. Patrick's Day Parade? No. Judge Comerford was the chairman when I... And Judge Comerford, I mean, he was... He ran the parade like he ran his courtroom. You didn't argue with him. You didn't... <laughs> whatever he said, you complied with him. And then Frank Byrne took it over from him. He passed away. Judge Comerford did. And uh, Frankie wasn't... Got ill and wasn't able to do it anymore, so... I succeeded Frank for 20 years. I was well, the chairman of the parade. I got to ask this because I, you know, Cardinal O'Connor and Cardinal Dolan and Egan were very nice to my dad and I. Oh, yeah. What role do they play in this parade every year? I mean, they let well, us let you guys be in this church as well. Didn't, I mean, the, the main thing was this: we, we, uh, when Frank Byrne and I came down here to meet with Cardinal O'Connor the first time, there used to be mass. There wouldn't be 300 people at that mass here, and we. We started the thing that our day of celebration began with a solemn pontifical mass in St. Patrick's Cathedral, celebrated by the Cardinal Archbishop in New York. And from that it developed up and it got to the point, there used to be two, three hundred people here. At the end up, they couldn't close the doors here. And then they got tickets for all the seats is numbered. Mm. Then they got tickets printed for us. So if you didn't have a ticket, that's where you sat in that pew. And if you didn't have a ticket, you didn't get in the door. So it was packed to capacity. 
Wow, you took them out of bankruptcy as well? Pardon? You took them out of bankruptcy, John. Oh, I did indeed, yeah. We were bankrupt and we left them with a nice, uh, uh, you know, people wanted to come in and participate in the parade, so they did. Uh, and and uh, we ran some very uh, uh, fundraisers, uh, not alone here, but out in Queens, so we did. And raised a lot of funds. And when I, when they hiked me out of the parade, there was over, almost half a million dollars in the kitty. Wow. And uh, we gave, a, a, there was, it was wide open. It was, uh, we had auditors come in every year, went over the books and give a financial report. There was nothing hidden or anything else. But sure. uh, yeah, it, I left it in good shape, but the <laughs> crew took over. You see, the Irish government got involved. Sure. And what we'd done <laughs> here didn't suit them over there. So, you know, uh, so they wanted me out of here. So that's why they got their wow. their people in here for to, to run it their way and, and, and uh, listen I done it for 20 years I done it the best of my ability mm. we built it up and uh, it ended up the, the unless you had a ticket you couldn't get in here you couldn't they couldn't close the doors here and, and the Knights of St. Patrick were the yeah. first people he went yeah. to when they were bankrupt and what is your name oh. my name is Garrett Cronin I'm a retiree from the Knights of St. Patrick for over 30 years. Well, thank you both for joining me right now. Uh, the vibrancy of the Irish community in New York and, and the America, what's the health of it? Do you feel like this is a vibrant community? Believe me when I say, uh, I wish people realized too, the first 200,000 slaves in our country came from Ireland in 1604 to 1640. Wow. And the African slaves came and 1639 and you got 12 african slaves for one irish slave mm. those are the facts you know and, uh, sure. and and the southern general said in the civil war you wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the irish soldiers in fighting 69 that's a historical I'm, fact i'm no no doubt about it and today you feel like the the community is vibrant right the irish community Absolutely. in america sure. and yeah. here. but there's still prejudice against Irish Catholics in this country, big time. And how do we change that? I don't know, but even going back to the colonies, there was only one colony that was legal to practice Catholicism, and that was Maryland, Maryland. The other 12 colonies was illegal. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I thought maybe... No, <laughs> I'd love I love hearing that. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And if so you want to get in touch with me, you can, too. Definitely. So, if you want my number... Uh, Definitely. We will stay in touch, because this is... I'd love to get more history on this. Um, so, what's your message today? We're still in the middle of this pandemic, yet Irish Americans and Irish, then the Irish want to celebrate. So, what's your message to those who want to celebrate today? Uh, celebrate someplace with prayers to God <laughs> and ask for our blessings on the United States and Ireland yeah. and Amen. all its people and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we Same. love America. Oh. Our faith Amen. took us a long way in this world and, and uh, thought it the proper way to treat people and how to be generous to others to, and reach your hand out to those that uh, are less fortunate than ourselves. And that's what we brought with us from Ireland, helping one another. We, we we done all right in this country. Every day I get up, I say, God bless America. Amen. God it's bless America. It's a remarkable America. country. And I have uh, Irish in me as well. And I'm, I love this holiday. I love this day. Oh. Yeah. And I also just, I love we the parade and what you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet there. you guys. You. Take God care. With you. God bless okay. you guys. Take care, my dear. God Take bless. Care. Peace. Faith is what sustains the Irish community in Ireland, here in America. Can you imagine being punished for practicing your faith, Catholicism. It's not an old idea. It's not a new idea. It's an old idea. But thanks so much to John and his friend there and the Knights of St. Patrick for really hitting home how important the faith is. You know, I've often said the Ireland, the Irish, the Italians, they understood and they understand much like today's business owners and pub owners and restaurant owners understand what it means to roll up your sleeve in any situation and make things happen. Clearly, they rolled up their sleeves to make St. Patrick's Day Parade what it is today. You got to read this one. Because did you know there is a COVID base Yes, a 
woman whose baby has antibodies already? A Florida woman gave birth to the first known baby. Thanks, Doc. Bill Galuccio and I are radio for this. First known baby with coronavirus antibodies. Because she was 36 weeks pregnant when receiving the first dose of Moderna's vaccine. So imagine welcoming your baby into a world and having antibodies. And you and in your baby to be safe. Now that's a safety net. If I ever saw one. So there's your good news. We got a baby born with antibodies. We had St. Patrick's Day in New York City, albeit very different. There was still a big crowd at St. Patrick's that wanted to celebrate the day and what St. Patrick meant to the Irish community. And I love it. Every time the calendar rolls around, we start seeing the cultural celebrations of Ireland, of, you know, Columbus Day later in the year in, in October. Schumann Day, Polish, Greek, Puerto Rican, everything in between this whole year will be once again special. And I always love that part of New York City. Let alone the fact that these big officials are at the parade, just what the parades mean to celebrate the culture of those who really rolled up their sleeves and built the city. And we've got to continue building it and building it back. Alex Garrett Podcasting, alexgnyc.com is my site. And you can find me at alex at alexgnyc.com and alexgnyc1 on Instagram and Twitter. Take care.